Hey, and kumusta mga Filipino SMEs out there? It's me, Dennis Velasco, CEO of Prosperna. Alam naman, we're all about empowering you. And today, we're going to talk about the top three mistakes that every Filipino SME must avoid in 2021 if they want to be successful. Are you ready? Hi everyone, I'm Rox and together with me is the CEO of Prosperna, Dennis Velasco. I hope that you all had a great start for 2021 and today we'll be exploring the three mistakes that Philippine SMEs must avoid in 2021. So Dennis, hi, great to see you. How is the world of helping Philippine SMEs these days? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Rox, great to see you too. And um, yeah, thanks for asking. I think uh, 2021 is possibly going to be the biggest year ever for SMEs. You can call it the, uh, the golden era of SMEs or um, the year of the SME, whatever the case might be, but this could possibly be the biggest opportunity for every SME out there for sure. Wow, the golden era. So it's so great to see how enthusiastic you are. But based on what happened last year in 2020, I think there's a lot of, of Philippine SMEs that really could use some direction. So jumping right into our like first question, what makes you so sure that this year 2021 is for SMEs? Why do you think that it's going to be the year of SMEs? Yeah, no, and I, I appreciate you putting me on the spot there, but you know, first and foremost, think about it, right? So it's important that we understand, you know, that every SME has got to follow their consumer, follow their customer, right? And if they can do that and um, they can observe the behavior and the patterns of their customer, then they can really almost achieve any business goal, right? And with digital, it's much easier to identify and see who your customers are, how to, and, and find them and, you know, connect with them. So, you know, here's a couple examples to really take a look at, right? You, I mean, clearly it seems like we're always online these days, but the, the real facts and figures are, Filipinos spend more time than almost anybody online. An average of 10 hours a day, right? So um, on top of that, we have one of the highest smartphone penetration rates. So that penetration rate of 63% is even supposed to increase to almost 80% in the next four years, right? So if you take a look at those two things, right? People spending time on the web, people spending time with that device right in front of their hand, then you can really start to see, um, you know, some change in behavior and that can make it easier for SMEs to get right in front of their customer, right? So besides some of those, you know, more digital examples, think about this. You know, you look at some of the core requirements of living day-to-day -day life. And the Department of Trade and, uh, I'm sorry, the Department of Transportation, right? There's so many of these different departments from the government, but the Department of Transportation, you know, released a statement that they're highly encouraging the, um, the jeepneys, right? The world famous Filipino jeepneys. They're encouraging jeepneys to uh, use track and trace mobile applications. So before any commuter gets onto the jeepney, they've got to check in and show the jeepney driver that they're safe and clear. That front end, very basic necessity of traveling to and from or throughout their day to day is now going on mobile apps, right? And the more mobile apps that consumers use, the faster our overall, you know, uh, region and country will be adopting technology because we're making it part of our daily mainstream, right? 
So here's some even crazier news. I think it was uh, 2021 is um, moving so fast. I can't remember if it was last week or this week, uh, but Gcash announced that in 2020, the use of their Gcash payments app grew by 700%. Wow, that's a huge number. Yeah, can you imagine lahat ng mga titas and titos before, natatapot sila sa Gcash. But now, wala silang choice, right? If you want that milk tea or something or whatever delivered to your house, kailangan mag Gcash, right? Milk tea. Milk tea. I mean, I know that the Philippines was always known to have low credit card penetration because I'm sure everyone prefer cash bases before, but wow, 700%, is that, is that really true? Well, look at some other examples. Um, if you've driven around lately and maybe gotten out of the house, because I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I went, uh, you know, a little stir crazy at home <laughs> and I just locked myself in my car and went for a, a day trip and just you know, drove around um, and went through a couple of the tollways. And lo and behold, you know, I saw lines of cars. And I was thinking to myself first, what the heck is all this traffic for? Everybody should be locked down, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what they were all lining up for? What? They were signing up for the cashless RFID pass. Because even, you know, private cars are not going to be able to pay and use cash if they want to go through the tollway. Uh, true. Right? So that's another example of how just day-to-day -day life is transforming right in front of our eyes. And if you want more proof, you know, I went on uh, Google the other day and just did a, um, an analytics search on um, how popular um, the search term Lala Move is. <laughs> And that alone is a leading indicator, right? Because that last mile delivery of products to consumers' homes is a good measure of what kind of digital commerce and online you know, shopping is going on. And just in the last few months, uh, the interest and the searches on Lala Move went up by four times. So, I would bet that anybody watching this, you know, uh, program right now, that everybody has booked a Lala move at least once in the last two weeks. Guilty I'd bet money on. <laughs> Guilty again. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of paying close attention to like consumer behavior and people nowadays, what about the way we consume social media? Because I'm sure that's a big technology also that we're all really into nowadays especially because of what's been happening in the world yeah and uh, congratulations uh, lahat ng Pilipino. Uh, is my tagalog okay yeah galing nga eh. it's okay. <laughs> laban all right cool well um yeah philippines congratulations you know is another winner in terms of the highest social media usage um you know of social media in the world you know, we spend more than four hours a day just on social media. Guilty. I don't know if that's something to be proud of. Yes, guilty again. And, um, you know, outside of, of course, the obvious use of Facebook, um, you know, even TikTok grew by 800% just in the Philippines. And now uh, Philippines is the top 11, number 11 user of TikTok. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> TikTok right. arrest nations, where you at? <laughs> exactly. And um, we even now have our own, if you don't mind me saying, my friends at Kumu, my, our own uh, kind of version of TikTok called Kumu, right? Um, and uh, this uh, social media content app really, honestly, in a way, came out of nowhere and now they are the number one free mobile app on the app store. <laughs> yeah, they have over 5 million Filipino users. Oh, 5 million. No, million, million, just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, marami. 
And I think they've only been around uh, approximately a couple years or, or so. So the bottom line is Filipino consumers is what you have to follow, follow their behavior. And it's absolutely no doubt that they are online all day using their smartphones more than ever, always, <laughs> almost always using social media. And like the Lala Move example, they're buying products and paying for them online with Gcash and shipping them from Lala Move every day. That's so true. I mean, like this is how the equation is looking for me so far. Consumers are all online. And so with everything that we've been talking about earlier, what you're saying is SMEs should, to put it simply, follow said consumers wherever they are, which is online, is that correct? I mean, it sounds kind of simple, but for you as a tech person who spent like his entire career in the Silicon Valley before coming here in the Philippines, what should Philippine SMEs avoid when they're doing their business? What are the things that they need to know and what should they be careful of so they can reach their goals in 2021, you know, amid all things that we're doing in digital consumerism? Yeah, great question. And I like how you frame that. So here's what I call the top three mistakes that every Philippine SME must avoid, um, especially this year as they um, adapt to the, the digital world. So number one, uh, selling only. Hindi pwede benta ng benta lang, right? You've got to focus on building a brand. Even the Department of Trade and Industry says one of the biggest important factors of the Philippine economy is building trust uh, online. So that's really important. And if you have a brand and you build it, that leads to trust, right? So, you know, I've said this before, you know, we're all humans and we're all consumers, right? So if all you're doing is benta ng benta, you just won't have many friends for very long, right? So on the other hand, if you build your brand, you'll create an actual emotional connection. And alam naman yung mga Pilipino, we are very passionate people. And I've heard this uh, when I first came to the Philippines, Dennis, if you win their heart, right, you will win their mind. And all actions start up here, right? So that's why a brand is so important. And I'm not just the only one that's saying that. Study after study after study. You know, it shows that customers are willing to pay more for a brand that they know and trust. Now, that doesn't mean you have to build a powerful, fancy product brand like McDonald's or Coca-Cola, right? All you have to do as a, you know, Philippine SME is really start with your personal brand, right? If you put it simply in that form, right, you can build off of that and all of a sudden you'll be attracting more people versus scaring them away with benta ng benta, right? So um, anyway, that, that's what I feel about the number one thing, which is stop selling and focus on building your brand. And then all of a sudden the sales will just come in, right? Uh, number two. Uh, thing to really avoid from a Philippine SME standpoint is um, don't just work in your business. You have to work on your business. So one of the great powerful things about uh, the Filipino culture is we're very hardworking, high work ethic people. We're creatures of habit, right? And that's why the Philippines has been stuck so long in the traditional, mga hindi ako teki, uh, right? And that has got to change because your customer is now techie, right? So because of this scenario, um, you know, if you follow your customers and now they are digital and you step back and analyze your business just for a second, right? All you have to do as an SME is just ask yourself, how can I make it easier for my customers to find me online, right? How can I make it easier 
for my customers to do business with me, right? As a customer myself, uh, I just wanna find the trusted providers. Of course, make sure they're legit, right? Find the right products and services that fulfill my needs, right? Check out pay, make the product come to my doorstep, and I wanna move on with the rest of my life. But my God, we're making it so hard. When, when a customer really wants to buy something, we make it so hard. In stock, out of stock, wala po, right? See, you know, paano ko magbabayad, right? Paano ko magsashit, sino magsashit, right? 30 minutes, I've talked to SMEs, and they say sometimes it takes up to an hour to complete a transaction from a manual commerce standpoint, right? So you've got to find ways to make doing business easier online, right? So, you know, think about it. Have you been out there lately yeah. um, really needing a product or service? And for some reason, when you really need it, no one can get it to you. True. I was, I was just at the market like the other day. I was looking for, I was looking for some sort of like soft vitamin supplements that I could have just bought online. But then I was out for some reason. So I was like, um, can I have some of these? I'm like, um, what are you looking for again? Uh, what type? Oh, sorry, we're out of stock. Maybe try coming back again next week and then maybe we'll have it on stock. And then they'll <laughs> expect you to go outside again. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, guys, we got to focus on the customer and make it easy to do business with them, right? So that's number two. Uh, number three, and this is one thing, I should have made this number one, but you know, I, you know, I'll uh, save the best for the last, let's just say <laughs> that, is uh, Philippine SMEs, they've got to change their mindset on investing in technology, not as a cost. You can't look at it as an expense because you have to ask yourself, if you don't improve your business with, with technology, what opportunity are you losing out on? Right? Do you want your business to be obsolete? Right? So what can magin karipot? Right? <laughs> Did I say that right? Hopefully. Karipot. Okay. You know, and I know that's kind of a running funny joke in some parts of the Philippines, but you have to look at technology as an investment. Right? The Philippine government cited that 90,000 companies were shut down, registered companies. How many of them could have survived if they would have adapted and maybe went to their customer using technology, right? The entire world has already benefited from the use of technology. So why not the Philippines, right? Any consulting firm will tell you that there's proven um, benefits to using technology. Number one, saving time. Number two, creating a competitive advantage. Number three, increasing productivity, right? So why manually post your content on social media when you can get a simple app to automatically post it for you? That way, as a business owner who's obviously limited on time, you can focus on finding the best products, creating vendor relationships, working with customers. That's where you make money not on the low value day-to-day -day monotonous tasks, right? So now if company A was using an automated email blasting application, right? Or mini software versus company B who sent emails to their customers one by one, who do you think has a better chance to be more consistent and connect and create that relationship with their customer? Company A. Yeah. Who do you think customers would probably reach back out to and say, hey, Rox, I'm so glad that you sent me that email because I was just thinking about you. I'm ready to buy your fill in the blank. It happens to us every day, right? So think about what I know all Facebook sellers are facing right now, right? And what Philippine SME doesn't have a Facebook page. So if you have a hundred Facebook chats, coming in, you have a hundred chats coming in from Viber, right? And obviously not all 200 of them are going to be qualified and ready to buy. 
not all customers are gonna be legit as well, right? So are you gonna answer them one by one when there's a very simple chat bot that can help you automatically qualify who might be ready to buy and the chat bot that can promote and show, right, the top sellers, right? Or can answer your um, shipping policy. It doesn't make sense to do that without using technology. Right? Yeah. At the end of the day, technology is, it's proven. It's proven to increase sales and revenue, right? And I love this one, that fact, because Prosperna, we are a living, breathing example. We came to the Philippines. I moved here a few years ago. Nobody knew us, right? And last year, in the worst year of pretty much every company out there, we were able to thrive and survive and grow over 260%, right? And because we're creating this machine and we can do more with less by leveraging technology. I don't know, hopefully that helps. It sounds so simple and like straightforward, Dennis, like especially coming from your personal experience, you just said, Avoid focusing on just sales. Instead, build customer trust and build your brand. Don't be complacent and work to improve your business as well. And technology isn't optional anymore, especially for businesses at this point. If they want to thrive, not just survive, I'm sure this will go a long way to help Philippine SMEs. So with that said, do you have any parting words for our listeners and viewers? Yeah, so, um... You know, first, thanks, Rox, for your time. And uh, I just want to thank all of our Philippine SMEs out there. Uh, we appreciate you trusting and supporting us, you know, by using our online store to help you market and sell your products easier for your customers. So other than that, go Prosper Nation! Thank you, Dennis. All right, so that's it, fun suit. <laughs> Stay tuned to Prosper Now for more information about small to medium-sized businesses, aka SMEs, about trends and tips on how to grow your business. For more advice on how to leverage e-commerce software to grow your business, book a free demo with us at www.prosperna.com. Also, click the subscribe button down below and hit the bell so you can get notified whenever we upload a brand new video. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Thank you, Dennis, and everyone. Till next time. Bye.